Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sai Bell Torres. I am from Sai Photography and I'm going to be walking you through step by step on Photoshop how I created this image, where the inspiration came from, and I'm also going to spill the tea on all my mistakes, which is kind of humiliating, but I think it's important that you know this because I don't want you to repeat it. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Knowlton. This is a magical, magical place. Just take a spin with us. I mean, just look at that sunset. Look at all the beauty this place has to offer. They're magnificent murals. I mean, anybody who shows up at this studio space wants to like go home and pick up a coloring book and start coloring because you're totally inspired. If you're interested in renting some studio space, you can do so. Uh, just go to thenolton.com. I will leave the comment and the description down below so that way you can find them because you can actually shoot in this space too. So what I did was I rented the boathouse which is 8,000 magnificent square feet of space um, it has a really rustic um, industrial feel and that's exactly what I was looking for and I will tell you why so I'm a really big fan of Neil Fern I follow all of his videos I just really love creative portraits I love creative photographers who really step up their game and and he had this uh, really beautiful session with a bride and of course I, I I do wedding photography as well but maternity is really my niche and so I wanted to do something with a mommy however I did not have a mommy on hand <laughs> to do this maternity session and the boathouse was going to be reserved for a couple of months during the summer. So I needed to make sure that I seized the moment and I had to seize the moment on a day of the week in the evening so I didn't have the spectacular sunlight coming through the windows, but that's okay, we just had to improvise. So the Knowlton was kind enough to kind of provide some uh, beautiful backlights up on the windows just to kind of light up the windows in the back. Um, but there's a lot of things that I wish I had done differently with this shoot, but overall I'm pretty pleased with the end result and you'll see. One of the things that you need to know is that I'm a very poor, poor photographer. I don't have the means to be buying all the latest tech. I can't, I can't do it. It's way too much money. So thank God for the Knowlton for providing all the uplighting to light up the windows because if not, I mean, the sun set really, really quick and we were working in the dark. Um, thank goodness for the lighting that they provided in the boathouse as well as the uplighting. But just to give you some insight, I was shooting with my brand new camera. That was one thing I did invest in. It left me very, very poor. But it's the Canon R6. I went, I upgraded to the new mirrorless system. I will say, yes, it's worth the investment. Absolutely. I mean, the focal, I like the face recognition on there is just phenomenal. It's uh, amazing. Anyway, so here are the things that I did get wrong. I did not set up my lighting. Um, I had two flashes on each side of Ademari, hoping to kind of light up the back side of her and the windows just to bring more color so that way she wouldn't be sitting in the shadows. And I had my flash point system, my main light, my key light is shining in front of her that was really casting a beautiful soft light directly on her face. I had the honeycomb on it so that we would have more of a spotlight effect because I didn't want the fabric to be super, super bright. I wanted her to be bright. So I had all of this set up, but my flashes did not sync with my flash point system. I just... I, I didn't set it up right and um, and I was just excited in the moment I just kind of was like triggering all the way through and then when I got home I was like oh man the, the flashes did not go off with all of the photos so I had some dark photos I had some light photos it was uh, a little disappointing so I took all the dark photos for this particular YouTube video and I might play with the lighter photos on another occasion but I really wanted to get this video out because I'm really excited about it 
So let me explain what's going on here. Adamari has to stay completely, completely still because this is going to be a composite image. I'm going to take maybe 10 or 15 photos and just layer them all on top of each other. We started off with black fabric, but what it was really doing was just covering the whole window. So then it just, and it was black. So, I mean, with the shadows and the lighting, it just wasn't going to work. It wasn't transparent enough. So we had gotten this red fabric. We wrapped it around her waist and um, it, it still wasn't transparent enough like when Neil did it he did it with a veil and it just flowed beautifully and it was completely transparent so you could see the whole backdrop um in this case I couldn't so I had to be very selective with the photos that I was going to layer on top because I wanted to make sure that the windows in the backdrop would definitely pop in the in these photos but Adamari's job was simply to stay still and I have Carlos just taking the fabric behind her and just throwing it up in the air we count it down like one two three and he'd throw it up in the air and we take a few photos and then he'd go over about two feet and we do the same again and we take a few photos and I took like three photos in sequence so I managed to get all of the photos that I needed however again my flashes weren't going off so it really narrowed my selection down but it's all right it's all good it worked out so after the night was done and I figured I had enough shots, we decided to call it a night and wrap up and close up shop. So now we're going to go straight into the editing. Are you ready for this? Okay, people, I am not the Photoshop guru. I did watch a lot of YouTube tutorials. I especially watched Neil's step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this. He uses a different program than I do. So what I did is I imported all of my photos into Lightroom. I selected the ones that I wanted to use. And because I didn't have the system that he uses, I just kind of exported them onto my desktop into a folder under my model's name called Ademari. I, and from there, I imported them into Photoshop. Okay, so once you have Photoshop open, what you want to do is you want to go into file and look for the word scripts. From scripts, you want to go into import stacked images. You're going to browse your files. You're going to select well, in my case, I selected my desktop, the file for Ademari, and I selected the images that were relatively the same and hit OK, and it automatically imports them all one by one, all stacked, like a stack of cards. And so it, it, in, right now you're watching Photoshop just kind of import every single one of the images right into the file. You can see them all right here. And you see this, like, eyeball that's next to each of the images that is so that way you can view each of the layers so we'll just unclick these layers and just go one by one and you can kind of see all of the photos that I selected where the fabric was flowing in a different direction um, so we'll just unclick all of these and we're gonna get down to the last image um, I'm looking for the image that I am going to use that is going to be the image of Ademari's face. That'll be kind of like the top image, which will be the first image. So as you can see here, when we'll zoom in close, you'll see that the lighting was just perfect, at least on her. So now I have my image selected and what I want to do is I'm going to take the next layer. You see this fabric right here? I want that fabric, just that fabric alone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the masking layer and I'm going to mask this. So I'm using a Mac, so I'm using control on my keyboard and I'm just hitting the mask button. And then I'm taking my paintbrush because the image obviously disappeared and I'm just painting right over the image to just reveal. So it's almost acting like an eraser and it's erasing the black and just revealing the fabric fabric right underneath the image. So as long as the images are exactly the same, you won't have to worry about, that's why it's so important to have it on a tripod, you won't have to worry about getting the wall right, getting the floor right, everything will be the same. The only thing that's moving is the fabric. And as you're painting away, if you make any mistakes, just reverse the colors and then you can just paint right over it and it'll erase what you just you know where your mistakes were so then we're just going to go on to the next image 
and we're gonna select the fabric from this image and we're gonna do exactly the same process this is actually kind of tedious it's actually a long process um, so I respect most photographers who take the time to do this this is quite the art but now I have like this more extravagant dress I did make a mistake right here so I need to go in and just kind of erase what I did but I am coming in and I'm actually taking the brush and, and just revealing the fabric underneath so now it's gonna look like she almost has like several pieces of fabric just flowing all over her like like there was a whole bunch of people around her and they're all just flying it now this one gets a little bit more trickier because this fabric is just kind of hidden right behind her but again I want her dress to look like it is big so we're gonna go in and see how it kind of like painted over the arm so we have to be like very careful on how we do this so we'll go in and we'll change the paintbrush and we'll correct that um, we're gonna undo that and just kind of do that over again but you get the hint and we do this over and over and over again with all of the layers and this video can get pretty long if i go through each of them this is about a 35 to 45 minute process selecting all these different layers so what i want to do is just kind of speed this along and get closer to the end okay so i'm just going to fast forward through all of this but i do want you to see the detail of what went into this one particular photo just taking the time to make sure that i'm layering it but i'm not messing up her face and her skin and everything else now there are some details in the windows um, i'm just taking the lasso and i'm right clicking and hitting fill content aware and what that does is that photoshop automatically takes the scenario around the image and just fills it up with what it would have been. So it, it works out perfectly in this case. So it, it saves me a lot of time in editing, but that's just the lasso tool. So from here, I'm going into my files because I did not have um, the smoke machine that Neil did and I really love the effect. So I have some images that I had gotten from Etsy and I'll share those with you in the link below. But I do have some smoke overlays. So what I'm doing is I'm just expanding this smoke image. I love this one because it kind of just looks like the smoke is just coming from one direction, taking over the floor and falling over her. So I'm just stretching it out, making it a little bit bigger so that way it falls on top of the entire image. And we'll just double click that so that way it falls into place and then of course we need to move it around because it is not in the right spot at all so we need to move this um more on i definitely went the wrong way we want to go back up to the top um and yeah that actually looks good and then from here i don't want it that bright so what i want to do is i just want to reduce the opacity and just bring it down a notch and I think right about there is good. I think right there is perfect. This one I kind of plugged in there by accident. So what I want to do is I want to reduce the opacity. Let's see if that works. Mm, not really feeling it. Uh, yeah, I think we'll do better without it. We'll just delete it. And yeah, I think this is um, looking pretty good. This image is looking pretty good. So from here, I think we might be all set. Okay, so from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge the visible files and I'm going to save it and then I'm going to take it back into Lightroom. So now that I have it back in Lightroom, the first thing I want to do is I want to crop this image and I want to make it into a nice 8x10 because I want to print this and put it up in my gallery, in my studio. So I'm just trying to straighten it out and I'm going to use this tool right here um, and I'm going to use the... I'm just going to kind of take the ruler and just line it up to see if I can get this completely straight to make sure that my image is nice and straight. I'm really happy with the overall um, image. Um, as you can see, I mean, I played around with it a lot, but I really love this image. One of the other things that I did was I actually took the radial tool and I circled Ademari and then inverted it. And then what I did was I kind of wanted to make sure that she would stay the same, but I wanted everything around her to be like super clear. And I 
kind of made this a little bit too big so I'm just gonna reduce it a little bit make sure that it goes around her because I want her to stay the way she is and so I kind of up the clarity um, reduce the texture just a little bit um, and then brought up the contrast and just kind of the, played with the shadows because I really wanted to make sure that she lit up and that people would just say wow look at that dress like notice the dress after like really we're showcasing Ademari and so I wanted to make sure that she was nice and bright but everything around her just kind of accentuated everything it you know accentuated her so I really sat on this image for maybe about a week and a half and um and I kind of played around with it a lot I realized that I left the glare in the windows like I, I did all this work on Photoshop and then ended up putting it right back in there I must have like undid it by accident and just didn't notice and then after because sometimes your eyes just need a rest so it's very important to just kind of step away and then come back to it and look at it all over again and see if it's exactly where you want it to be so I took a few days put it back into Lightroom and just played with the colors a little bit so I went back and forth I like red but you know I'm a girl I love pink and so I kind of played with the pink let me know which you like best if you like the red or the pink leave a comment down below if you want to see more videos like this please leave me a comment give me suggestions give me inspiration I love it all and thanks for watching Well, mi gente, I'm ready to go to bed. I don't know about you, but that was hours and hours of editing condensed into 20 minutes. And it was sitting on it, refreshing my eyes. As you notice, if you didn't notice, I put a little photo glare, a uh, sun flare actually is what it's called. I had downloaded it from Etsy. I'll put that in the comment below. But the sun flares, I actually downloaded and put one really small on top of the globe just to give it a little extra drama because you know me, I love drama. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. Good night. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow, and please share. Also, don't forget to check out the playlist. Some good content in there.